Ramadan has started. It's a time of prayer, a time of fasting. But behind the quiet facade, a mobilization is taking place. On the streets, the sense of calm is deceptive. Over the past few days, we've been invited to meetings at houses on residential back streets. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. There's some kind of gathering of the clans here going on. Salam alaikum. Inside, local tribal chiefs have gathered for a summit with a Shia militia group. These call themselves the Kara Brigade. They're one of several sending fighters up to the front lines to bolster the Iraqi security forces battling ISIS. We're thirsty to fight, this commander tells me. Until recently, he says he and his men were in Syria, defending a Shia shrine on the outskirts of Damascus. But they returned to Iraq in response to a call to arms from the Grand Ayatollah Ali Sistani, this country's most senior Shia cleric. We are a professional and pious regiment. We believe in the Imams, in the followers of Ali and Zainab. ISIS are terrorists, Wahhabists from Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Turkey. Some people in certain areas of Baghdad have said they're very worried about the reappearance of militia on the street. What can you say to people who fear another sectarian war? The Sunnis and the Shia are brothers. We are in the same boat and we share the same responsibility. We ask the USA, we ask France and Britain, all the great powers to help Iraq fight terrorism. These people are extremists who are trying to wipe out civilization. <laughs> On the eve of Ramadan, the fighters gather for a final midday meal. Some of the militiamen are also clerics. This commander in the white turban is an imam from the holy city of Najaf. Despite all the talk of Sunni Shia brotherhood, there's no disguising the sectarian overtones of this conflict. Well, there's a whole proliferation of these Shiite militias in Baghdad now. This lot obviously allied with the government, working together with the Iraqi security forces, but others are completely independent or even funded by the Iranians. And we're off to meet another group now. ISIS control is centered on Iraq's Sunni heartlands to the north and west of here. But there are very realistic fears there could be infiltrators here in Baghdad as well. And the militias are deployed at checkpoints around the city. In another quiet residential district, we meet the spokesman for a militia called Hezbollah. They say they're not related to the Lebanese group of the same name, but they are thought to have close ties to Iran. Everyone wants to know whether we're supported by Iran or not supported by Iran. Well, Arabic countries, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and America, they're supporting terrorism in Iraq with weapons and money. Obama has asked Congress for money to support the Syrian opposition. We are asking all countries to support us, politically and militarily, and Iran is part of that. Iran has proven that it doesn't abandon its allies. Look at Syria. Mr. Musawi says his group does not receive any direct funding or weapons from Iran, but they're not hiding their affiliation. On the wall, portraits of the Ayatollahs Khomeini and Khamenei. Why do you have him up on your wall? No different from having a poster of Nelson Mandela or Che Guevara, he told me. In heavily Shia neighborhoods like Sada City, militia groups are deployed to protect mosques and shrines. In 2006, it was the bombing of a holy site in Samara that ignited a sectarian civil war. Mortars landed there again last night. Another large-scale attack could have catastrophic consequences. As the sun loses some of its scorching intensity, the tribal chiefs gather in the relative cool of the evening. They talk about a coming together of all Iraqis, Sunni, Shia and Kurd. But the sheikhs are here to pledge their support for a Shia militia. The Imam turned fighter talks of victories in battle. 
ونبشركم of enemies killed and captured. Iraq is being sucked into a wider regional and sectarian war. We are vengeful people, they sing. We demand revenge.